Hello, welcome to episode okay, so two. There's our blanket. Good. Excellent. It's asymmetrical to the Dropping and sinking. Uh, uh, notice how the... So just notice. Joining us for the second episode next week. Good. Namaste. Hello and welcome to episode 104 of Namaste Yoga. We're back inside. The weather has turned wet and cold. So we're in my living room for the next few months again until we are able to live somewhere where we can film outside all year round. <laughs> that would be ideal. Um, we have a special treat for you. We spent some time um, last weekend putting together a couple of videos for you, a morning yoga sequence and an evening yoga sequence. And these are not going to be available through the regular channels of distribution of Namaste Yoga, but you can receive yours by going to melissawest.com. That's uh, one L, two S's, M-E-L-I-S-S-A-W-E-S-T dot com. And when you go there, you'll see that there's a sign up box where you can register for our newsletter and when you do you'll get those two free videos one video to start your day one video to finish your day and then do stay on the newsletter because we'll be giving out gifts like that from time to time so we would love having you with us um, also another way that people really enjoy connecting with us is through Facebook you can friend us on Facebook at your namaste yoga so you can look that up and we'd love to have you there come on and introduce yourself we're four likes away from 400 likes which is pretty cool okay so today's class is on courage and I'm going to have you start by resting back lying down on your backs in Shavasana and courage is said to be a strong character um, and emotion for those people who have a strong kapha constitution. And those people tend to have little um, thicker, bulkier bodies. And so let's begin by bringing our attention to your physical body. Notice what it feels like to have your body resting on the ground right now. Feel your whole back body connected to the ground, the backs of your heels, backs of your legs, the back of your pelvis, your whole back and your head. And feel your body sinking deeply into the earth underneath you each time you breathe out. And also become aware of your physical body, your bones sinking into your muscles, sinking and dropping into the ground. So today's class is on courage, this idea of fearlessness, self-assurance, determination, heroism, valor, and concentration. And we experience courage when our ego is firmly in charge, directing our body, our minds, our intellect, without error or hesitation. So you can consider um, some various occupations where courage is the norm. If you consider firefighters or um, also pilots, they have to react quickly and without hesitation. And so that is the, the deal with courage. As we practice as yogis, we are thinking about gathering up our inner strength. And we do this each time we come to the mat. We connect to that part deep inside of us that knows what's best for us. So there has to be some kind of faith in something bigger than us that strengthens our courage and keeps the pride at bay so that we don't get too attached to our ego being the one and uh, being self-identified with being doing things, but that having something greater than yourself. So we practice courage when we are living our dharma, our life purpose, 
And this refers to more than your career or your occupation. You can look at courage in relation to your relationships, in fact. So when you look at all the different relationships you have in your life, there are different purposes associated with each one of those. So as a parent, your dharma is to parent your children. In um, Hindu mythology, there are loads of stories that bring up courage. We're going to work with Hanumasana today, Hanuman's pose. This is a great little monkey demigod who has all these incredible powers and serves Ram unconditionally. And then, of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, there's Arjuna, the great warrior who struggles at the beginning of the battle between two opposing sides with um, whether he should fight. And this, because it seemed like a, a losing proposition to him. If he fights, some people get hurt. If he doesn't fi fight, other people get hurt. And this is this metaphor for the real struggle that ensues within each one of us when we realize that it's our mind and our deep-rooted tendencies, our samskaras, that deceive us from uh, our, our true self and happiness. So uh, we can become free of this when we live our dharma and when we realize our karma and uh, practice the yoga of action. So one of the ways we do this is we withdraw our senses, just as you're doing right now. As you rest back, you have your eyes closed, and you tune inward so that you cut out all the noise and the distraction from the world and come to know the part of you inside of you that is always um, true and clear, your higher self. So given today's topic of courage, begin to set your intention for your practice today. So what is it that you want to receive by practicing your yoga today? Maybe you have some greater intention or sankalpa that you're working with in your life right now. And you can tap into that through your yoga practice as well. So once you set your intention, you can begin to wiggle and stretch out. We are going to stay lying on your back to begin. Oh, we're going to use some props today. If you have a bolster, um, that's great. You can use that. Or um, if you have blocks, um, you'll need two blocks if you have them. If not, do your best with what you have at home and you can work around that. Okay, so we're going to start lying on our backs. And we're going to be practicing a lot of the warrior poses today as well. So we'll start by opening up your hips a little bit. Just bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. And then cross your right leg over your left leg. Really open your right leg out to the side. And then draw your left leg in. You can reach through and hold on to your hamstring there. And then release this leg, uncross your leg, and then cross the other leg over and draw your other leg in.
and then release this side and take your legs wide on the mat maybe even a little bit wider than the mat and you're going to sway them to the left side and as you sway them to the left reach your right hip forward so you're pushing forward here and you're getting an opening in the front of your hip and then as you sway to your left push forward through the front of your left hip so we'll go from side to side that way opening up the front of your hip Okay, and then come back to center, and we'll use our bolsters now if you have them. If not, you can use a block in its place. And the way this is going to work is you'll just press into your feet and tuck your bolster underneath your pelvis. So you're kind of in a supported bridge pose. You could do this with a block as well, or you could stack up a bunch of blankets or pillows and make it happen that way as well. And then what you're going to do is bring your legs in, and this should be a little easier because you have the bolster, and um, draw your knees towards your armpits for happy baby pose. And then we're going to do half happy baby pose. So you'll actually take your left leg and reach it long and keep your right leg drawing in. So this is like lunge pose upside down. But you should feel an opening in the front of your left hip here. Great, and then we'll switch sides. So draw your left leg in and arc your right leg over. Get an opening in the front of your right hip this time. Okay, and then release this side from your body as well. You'll place your feet back on the floor, press into your feet, and lift your, <laughs> mine's stuck, <laughs> lift your bolster out. <sighs> okay, and then roll to your side, and come up to seated. Let's see, that shouldn't be the, as much trouble as it is for me today. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do some lunge pose to open up the front of our hips a little bit more. So if you know what Hanumasana pose is, then you'll know why we're doing that. If not, we'll hold the surprise until the end. So come on to all fours and take a step forward with your left foot. 
And you want to lean forward enough so that you're feeling an opening in the front of your right hip. And then you'll sink down through your front foot and come upright. And I'm actually going to, and I'll recommend that you do this too, or put a blanket underneath your, knee, your knees, but roll up your mat so you've got double padding underneath your knees. Knees are precious. <laughs> we want to <laughs> treat them like they're the most precious thing. Okay, and bring your arms up. So we're doing uh, like a mini version of Warrior One right now. I love that last week when we did the um, mini versions of sun salutations. We had a viewer, her name's Elisa. She posted on, um, actually, she probably goes by Alyssa uh, on Facebook. She's, she loved them so much. She was like, can I do them this way all the time? I'm like, sure, knock yourself out. <laughs> a lot of people liked that last week's show, 103, with all the short vinyasas it was a very popular episode a lot of people a lot of really positive feedback about it okay come on down all right and then let's switch sides and this time you'll step forward with your right foot and lean into that lunge here so you're opening up the front of your left hip this time And then sink down through the front of your right foot. You'll come upright. I'm going to double up my mat here again underneath my left knee. Come upright. Great. And then arc your arms up for a mini version of Warrior One. This will help to prepare us for the Warrior One pose when we come to standing. So you'll notice for last week's class, it was about calmness. It was about easing into our bodies and receiving postures and, you know, generally being easy on ourselves. And this week, it's a lot different because with courage, we're connecting to our strength a lot more. So interesting, right? Just notice which ones you prefer <laughs> or seem easier for you. Okay. Um, spread your fingers nice and wide, reach your left foot back and reach your right foot back and come into plank pose. Let me give you an option here too for wrists. You can come into plank pose on your forearms. Okay, so choose which one works best for you. And then join in because yoga is not a spectator sport. <laughs> Breathe into our side ribs. Breathe out, draw your navel back. And let's hold this for a few more breaths. And then lower your knees down and sit back on your heels to stretch out your low back as a counter pose here.
Okay, so roll up through your spine and come to a comfortable seated position. So prop yourself in whatever you way you need so that you're comfortable. I'm thinking I might not actually need that. Come to a comfortable seated position. Great, and we're going to do a mudra today. This is one of my favorite mudras, actually. It's the Ganesh Mudra. Here's Ganesh. Welcome to our new addition to this show. Um, we got this beautiful Ganesh uh, statue. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles. He is great to invoke at the beginning of any experience. And always remember to, um, because we have some really, oh, Ganesh is on my t-shirt too, but always remember as well that these Hindi, Hindu deities, they represent aspects of ourselves. So I know we have some really beautiful Christian viewers who are really engaged in our community. And I just respect so much that they, um, they understand that and aren't threatened by these deities that you know, there, there are such great stories that uh, so many great things for us to learn from them. So this hand is held out in blessing. Ganesh loves his sweets. So I think that reminds us to enjoy the sweetness of life. And then here, of course, is the lotus flower, which grows in mud. So something completely beautiful can grow out of the most um, horrific experiences. And, um, and here's the axe over here on this side. And the axe it has to do with, um, the axe shows up a lot in Hindu um, iconography. And the axe is, has to do with slaying our egos. That's why you see a lot of severed heads. It's not, it's not as violent as it sounds. <laughs> it's just that, you know, if you get rid of that kind of egoic attachment to rationality, and uh, then we can come into our hearts and live in a more heart-centered way. So um, it's pretty pretty great pretty excited to have Ganesh here with us so that's kind of funny that the first time he's with us that we're going to do the Ganesh mudra I am actually going to sit up on this block okay th this is for courage so take your left hand and turn your palms out and create a little hook there and hook your right hand into it and you'll hold your hands at the level of your heart roll your shoulders back and down lengthen up through your spine and gently pull apart your fingers so you feel that strength of the courage here and then just close your eyes and we'll take some nice long slow deep breaths
release that. Okay, we're going to come up to standing now and do the warrior poses. Okay, so stand at the front of your mat. We're gonna do the warrior postures. And let's take a generous step back with your left foot. So for women, you're gonna line up your front heel to your back heel. Line those two things up. For men, you're gonna line up heel to the arch of your back foot. And then turn your hips so they face the front short edge of the mat. Now, if this really torques your knee, because your hips aren't flexible enough to do this, then you can always come up onto your toes at the back, lift your heel, and just straighten that whole thing out. So you've got a straight line from your hip to your knee to your ankle. This is a better alignment for sure, especially if your hips are tight, okay? And then you're going to sink down through your front right. It also takes more strength, so that's why I went back to the other one. <laughs> okay, drop down through your front right sit bone and arc your arms up. Here's warrior one pose. In warrior one pose, we face our challenges head on. Okay, and then find a way to release this posture from your body. And we'll step up to the front of your mat again. And we'll do this posture on the other side as well. So take a deep step back with your, I guess you can take a deep breath and a deep step. We just made that up now. With your right foot, your right toes are turned on, an, on a 45 degree angle. Or if it's any kind of torquing going on in your knee, remember you can come up on your back toe. Maybe I'll show that version this time. Sink down through your front left sit bone. Body's in the center here. A lot of times I see people leaning forward in this pose. Stay centered, drop your tail, arc your arms up. Warrior one on the other side. Okay, great, then release this posture from your body and stand at the front of your mat again. Let's take a deep breath in and let it fall out. <sighs> okay, now we're gonna do warrior two pose. Actually, let's do it this way. So we'll start with your feet wide on your mat and we'll just do it each side that way. Um, so wide legs and you'll turn your, this will be your left toes out and then turn your right toes in. Now here, ideally, you're gonna keep your hips uh, facing the long edge of your mat. Bend your front right knee. Now, if your knee starts to, if I see, if I really turn my hips towards the long edge of my mat, look what happens to my knee. That's not good for my knee at all. So always choose your knee over your hip, roll your knee, your left knee over top of your little toes so that you can see your big left toe. And then bring your arms up to parallel to the ground for a warrior two pose. So in this pose, you stand in the present moment. You gather all that intelligence, that wisdom that we talked about that comes with courage from the past, and you gaze into the future. So this pose is really about gathering up courage to take action in a way. Okay, lower your arms, turn your left toes in. Let's just take a break and do a forward fold here. Hinge forward through your hips. A wide-legged standing forward fold. If you've got your bolster or your blocks close by, you can always 
use those to raise the ground. Okay, and then come back up. And this time you'll turn your left toes in and your right toes out to the short edge of your mat. Sink down through your right sit bone. Pull your left hip back as much as you can, but favor your knee over your hip here. Bring your arms up to parallel to the ground. And then you'll gaze over top of your right fingertips this time. and then release this posture from your body. And now we'll do warrior three, which is, is a pose of action. So once you face your uh, challenge, you gather up your courage, then you take action. And this is about living your dharma in karma yoga, which is the yoga of action. And so when I was thinking about this class, I was thinking, oh, sure, maybe everybody thinks that a yoga teacher's dharma would be like, you know, kind of lofty. So I was trying to think of a really down to earth example of living my dharma. So a couple of weeks ago, when I was putting this class together, we were um, having a lot of um, challenges with my daughter, who was giving us a lot of um, grief over when we would ask her to do jobs. <laughs> so she, we would ask her to empty the dishwasher and she would cry and go on. And so I noticed I was getting into this pattern of um, not asking her and just doing it myself because it was going to be easier, right? But there <laughs> is where the courage didn't come in, right? So it, I realized that I wasn't doing her, her any favors as her parent, right? So my dharma as her parent is to um, discipline her and to teach her how to be a good functioning member of her society. So I realized I was going to have to start doing this. So I started and of course we got a lot of um, tears and you don't love me anymore when we started to bring up the whole, like when you don't help or when you give us grief about it, you know, then there was a lot of tears. So um, again, it was all part of this day in, day out yoga of action, you know, dealing with that in a way with ahimsa with uh, nonviolence, with truthfulness, like in truth, kiddo, you need to help out and contribute. So this is what it means to live our dharma. It doesn't, it's not like my dharma is to, I mean, it should be, but my dharma is to live at peace and create peace in the world. But it really needs to start first in our own hearts and in our own homes. Um, if we can have peace in our own hearts and our own homes, then we can have peace in the world. So that's, that's where we need to start. <laughs> okay, so that is Dharma and Karma, keeping it real here. <laughs> okay, warrior three pose, the yoga of action. This is shooting those peaceful arrows, and sometimes it's uncomfortable and it takes courage because you know the tears are going to come or what have you. Stand on your left foot and hinge forward. Come towards parallel to the ground. If you've got a wall behind you like me, you can use your wall for balance. And you can feel the strength in your body it takes to do a pose like this. Okay, and then come on up. Release this pose. 
goes from your body. And then uh, let's do this on the other side. So bring your arms up and arc forward on your right leg. Come towards parallel to the ground the best that you can. You can use a chair or a wall with your arms too. So Tim says we just received a donation. Karen Marlowe, thank you, Karen, for your generous donation. We really appreciate that. Okay, stand at the front of your mat again. It really does help us. We are in the process of trying to move this show <laughs> into the next level for video and sound. And um, today I feel like I want a studio. <laughs> so your donations help. <laughs> okay. So let's, I'm thinking, wow, how great it must be for um, like Universal Studio or whatever. You just walk in and it's all set up. <laughs> okay, let's do, now we're going to do Peaceful Warrior. This is one of my favorite warriors. Um, we can think about the archetypes in our culture of Gandhi and Martin Luther King and the current Wall Street sit-ins, the Occupy Wall Street that um, are this way of peacefully showing up and protesting and speaking up for your truth. So let's do a peaceful warrior. Take a big step back with your left foot. So it starts the same way as warrior one. Sink down through your front right sit bone. Arc your arms up. And then you arc your left arm back. And it's a slight back bend. Keep your tail tucked under here so your low back is long. And look up through your right fingertips. and then release that side. Step forward and we'll do that on the other side. Step back with your right foot. Turn your hips so they face front. Sink down through your front left sit bone. Arc your arms up. Your right arm comes behind you. Look up through your left fingertips. this pose for from your body we're gonna do a pose to tap into that strength of courage okay we're gonna do let me give you a modification the modification for this pose would be downward facing dog so you can start with us you'll need a wall like we have here hopefully you all have your wall space cleared out at home or your tree space outside if you're still outside um, you're gonna come, I have some viewers, they do their namaste yoga every week on their iPads outside in their backyard. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. I'm totally envious that you live in a place that you can do your yoga outside all year round. Okay, on all fours, you can come, have your feet against the wall. So that's how you determine how far you're going to be from the wall. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Inhale, you'll exhale, tuck your toes under, come into a short downward facing dog. Ooh, and this is, where the courage comes in, <laughs> you're gonna take your right leg up the wall, press it into the wall, whoops, and come into um, handstand preparation. You can take one leg off the wall maybe. I wouldn't take both legs off unless you've got somebody helping you. Okay, and then to come down, you can just 
walk down the wall? <laughs> Did we get that all? <laughs> I'm impressed. <sighs> so that is handstand preparation. And it takes a lot of strength in your upper body. And it's that kind of strength. And if we feel that strength in our physical bodies, we can feel that strength for courage internally as well. We're going to do bow pose. How much time do we have left? Okay, bow pose. We're going to line your stomach and bend your right leg in. Extend your left leg out long. Wrap your right hand around your right ankle or foot. Roll your right shoulder back and up. Inhale. Exhale and pull your heel away from your buttocks to lift your chest off the ground. Okay, release this side from your body. And just wiggle your hips from side to side. Okay, so now let's bend your left leg in. Reach around and hold on to your left foot or ankle. Roll your left shoulder back and down. Inhale here. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground. Exhale. Pull your heel away from your buttocks to lift your chest up off the ground. You can use your right hand here for leverage too. Okay, and then release this side down. Take your hands under your shoulders, push yourself up onto all fours and back into child's pose to stretch out your low back. And then roll up through your spine. All right, and um, take your legs straight out in front of you. Slide your left leg in. Cross your left leg over your straight right leg. Inhale here, nice and tall. Exhale and hinge forward through your hips. So you get it. When stop when you start to feel sensation in the back of your leg. And hinge back up and cross your legs so your left leg is extended. Slide your right leg in, cross it over your left leg. Inhale, lengthen up nice and tall. Exhale, hinge forward to your hips. And inhale and come up. And now we're going to do Hanumasana pose. So um, Hanuman was a monkey deity who served Ram. And Ram was a warrior. 
and in one battle Rom was injured really really badly and the only thing that would save him was this specific herb from the Himalayan mountains so Hanuman of course offered to go get it and he had no idea how he was going to get there so in the story he crouches down at the this body of water that he's got to cross to get to the Himalayan mountain like this in lunge pose and he pleads for help and then when he gets the help he remembers that he can fly so he actually lunges right over the body of water <laughs> in the splits pose so that's what we're going to try now we are going to try it you don't you know everybody's going to do their best okay so here's where you need your bolster again if you have it and if you don't have a bolster i'm going to show you how you can do it with your blocks so you'll put your bolster um, between your legs like you're going to do lunge pose and lean into lunge pose and then you'll start to socks is really good for this because then you can just <laughs> slide your foot forward slide your foot forward and come onto the bolster and bring your arms up Okay, you can <laughs> release this from your body. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> and let me show you, if you don't have a bolster, how you can do this with your blocks, okay? So this time, you can take your right foot forward, come into lunge, and remember, you're, spo you're supposed to be trying this. You can all try and do your best here. <laughs> Not a spectator sport. Take your right leg forward, slide it forward and adjust the level of your blocks so that you can support yourself on your arms here <sighs> it takes courage to do this pose <laughs> yeah the men in my class were not that excited about this pose this week <sighs> okay that's that Come out carefully and go ahead and lie down for Javasana. Okay, so rest back with your palms turned up beside you and allow yourself to receive your practice. The more challenging the practice and this this practice was physically demanding the sweeter the shavasana so allow yourself to s receive the sweetness of rest after all that effort Stay resting in Shavasana for five or ten more minutes. Um, I'm going to offer something in the show notes now. Um, people want to know what classes are good to practice together. So I've mentioned a number of things this week. There's episode 77 on samskaras, ep episode 78 on karma, episode 79 on dharma. Um, episodes 12 and 87 are on the warrior poses. Episode 81 is on Hanumasana. Episode 76 is on the true self that we talked about a lot today. And there's um, episode 18, which is about facing your fears. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's more classes than you need to complement this class in one week. So you can choose. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us for episode 104 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for your donations. They do help us so much in being able to offer this podcast freely to you. Namaste.